Old School Square is a 32-year-old organization. I don't think any of us could have imagined that after 32 years of volunteering, of writing checks, that our tenure would end without a conversation, without any public input. It's hard to reconcile that. And there's a lot of us out there. And I would argue some of Delray's most celebrated volunteers are demoralized now. So we're looking for a way to move forward. And um, it's been really tough. It's been really tough. I spent the last 15 years dedicated to this organization and it ended with a punch in the face. We weren't given six months. If you go back to the August 10th meeting and you look at the motion, it's very clear that Julie did not understand what she was voting for. Had she wanted to give us six months, then she should not have terminated without cause. There was another option. There was an option to terminate us with cause, which would have given us the right to cure the specific reasons that they wanted us terminated. Those reasons were never offered. So therefore, it would be impossible for us to address a termination without cause. So the notion that she was somehow proactive in trying to save old school is a ridiculous notion. Uh, she takes credit for having met with Margaret Bloom. Unfortunately, Margaret actually had to reach out to her, and it was two months after the termination. Margaret had a great meeting, but then Julie didn't follow up. Julie also claims to have talked to Deborah Dowd. It wasn't true. Deborah actually reached out to her. They did meet, and this was actually two days before um, the vote to allow us to continue construction on the uh, Crest Theater building. And she's told Deborah that her only concern was getting the uh, audits in. And if we get those audits in, everything should be great. She also takes credit for having met with myself and uh, Francis Bork. And again, that was at Francis's prompting, and that was uh, a day before the uh, September meeting regarding our construction continuance. And um, she assured us at that meeting that she was in support of us, that they were actually, that termination was not even on anyone's radar, and that, again, just get the audits in and everything should be fine. Then she also takes credit for having spoken to me several times. And when she, um, after the termination, I actually reached out to her. And I reached out to her because it seemed very clear to me that she did not understand her motion. So I wanted her to perhaps reconsider her motion in an attempt to save the organization. It became clear to me that this was about the people, not about the organization. So I even offered to speak to the board and perhaps get them to resign en masse and let the city reappoint a board. But save the facility, save the assets, save the volunteer base, allow the renovation to continue on. She chose not to call me back. A month later, I tried again, essentially had the same conversation with the same conclusion. She told me she'd think about it, and I never heard it back from her again. Two months prior to the termination, we had Jimmy Buffett, which is the largest act we've ever had in our city. The travesty is that 32 years of hard work was incinerated in one brief moment. It elicited a response from this community that we've never seen before. We had over 11,500 people sign a petition asking the commission to reconsider this vote. If you have a development project and five people come and they speak against it, that has an effect on this group. But 11,500 petitioners were not enough to get them to reconsider or even discuss the, their vote. That's really hard to reconcile. We were doing, under the circumstances, exceptionally well. We had money in the bank. How many businesses need to be put out of business that are paying all their bills and are operating? This was personal. It's obvious, it was personal, and, and I don't know how anyone cannot see that. Well, for me it was personal.